Well, hey everybody, it's Outland. How's it going? Today I'm going to do a kind of a different video for you. Uh, it's going to be more of an instructional type video. And, you know, I, I decided to put this together uh, because I get asked a lot about uh, hammock camping. Still, you know, a lot of people are curious about it. They don't understand it. They're like, why do you do it? What do you enjoy about it? Is it really that much fun? It really is that much fun. But, you know, some people it takes a little bit of convincing. So what I'm going to do is show you a presentation that I did uh, back in 2018. This was an in-person presentation that I did at what's called the Adventure Summit here in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, it is a It happens every other year. It is a huge outdoor conference put on by our local Metro Parks organization. Absolutely awesome uh, conference. Now, it didn't happen in 2020, of course, because of COVID, but uh, yeah, so the last time I got to present, present this was uh, in 2018. But I have this hour-long presentation that uh, I did in, a, in front of a large group of people. Uh, it was an in-person presentation all about hammock camping and just my perspective on it, my take on it, kind of just, you know, my thoughts. And I am by no means an expert on this. If you really want to know an expert on hammock camping, check out Suge Emery's channel. I'll send you more information later on the video about him, so don't, don't leave just yet. But these are my thoughts, my experiences, and my learnings from, you know, I've been doing this for about 10, 11 years now. So I do have a little bit of experience with hammock camping. So I thought I would share that with you. Now, this is going to be a very long video. This, it's going to be about an hour long plus presentation. I am going to break this video into chapters. So if you don't want to hear about the basics or whatever, if you want to skip to a certain area, just click the little link down there below for the timestamp, and it'll take you to the section you want to learn about, which should be very helpful to you. But uh, hopefully, if you're a beginner and you know nothing about hammocks, you've never hammock camped before in your life, you want to watch this from the very beginning, and I think it'll give you a lot of good information that you might have been looking for. So let's get into it. So when I talk to people about hammock camping, uh, a lot of them immediately think something like this, right? Uh, this <laughs> this is a backyard hammock, one of those net hammocks that you hang, you know, on, on a stand or between some trees or something uh, that you just lounge in around in, you nap in for an hour or two, and that is it. And that's, that's what a lot of people think of when they think of hammocks. Of course, we know that there are much different options. Now, now that hammocks have been out for a while, people also do think about the uh, parachute style nylon type of hammocks, you know, the ENO style of hammock, those uh, stretchy ones. Uh, you see those everywhere, and a lot of people do have those, and a lot of people have tried to hammock camp in those. I don't recommend those for hammock camping, and I'm going to tell you why later on this presentation. So now here's an example of my hammock camping setup that I did back in 2016. This is the coldest that I ever hammock camped. Uh, this got down to 7 degrees Fahrenheit this night. Now you can see I've got a little bit different kind of setup here. You can't see the hammock really under the tarp there, but I have a, a specific camping hammock in there covered by a tarp, you know, it, which was protecting me from the wind and moisture and everything else. I'm going to go over all this stuff, this whole entire setup for you so that it makes sense as we go along here. So why in the world would you want a hammock camp? Well, there's a lot of reasons why people hammock camp. And there are a lot of reasons that I chose on this list. And th this is just a few. But, uh, you know, for starters, it, it gets you off the, the hard ground, the hard, wet, buggy ground. If you've ever been in a tent that's had some roots and rocks and stuff underneath it, it's the worst. It's absolutely awful. I, I've done it so many times in the past. You know, it's just, oh, man. Being, uh, being on the ground, being, you know, cold and wet uh, on the ground, even with a pad and things like that, uh, just, man, I, you know, as I get older, uh, trying to, you know, hike several miles in a day and then sleep on the hard ground, even on a pad, uh, it, it's awful. I just, it's very difficult. It provides more options for a camp location. Now, you know, in a tent, you've got to have a certain kind of pitch. You've got to have a you know, relatively flat ground. You've got to have an open space uh, free of rocks and roots, and, and you know, that's the most ideal. Uh, with a hammock, you have a lot more options. You know, you just can find a couple trees and uh, string them up, and, you know, the ground can be completely, uh, you know, at a slope. You can have some vegetation underneath you. 
even have rocks and things as long as you're careful. So uh, it gives you a lot more options in certain areas, and I will get to that later on. Now, take this with a grain of salt when I say it's easy to set up and tear down. Uh, this uh, can be as difficult or as easy as you'd like, and sometimes uh, hammocks are not the easiest to put up, but uh, you know they can be once you get it down and you've done it for a few times. Uh, setting up a hammock, it be, kind of becomes second nature. Once you get used to you know, pitching it and everything, it, it's it's not difficult. Going back to sleeping on the hard ground, it provides a better night's sleep after a long day of hiking. For me, it's less pressure points on me. You know, it's like I wake up and, and I just feel refreshed. I don't have any soreness or tenderness. I am ready to go hike another 10, 15, 20 miles the next day with no problems. That's what I love about the hammocks. They're probably the biggest thing I love about using my hammock. Also, they're infinitely configurable. So unlike a tent, which is pretty much set up in a certain way, you know, you pretty much have uh, a certain way that you set up a tent, either with poles or without poles. Uh, that's it. That's, that's how the, the tent's going to be set up. But with a hammock, uh, you have all kinds of options. You can pitch it different ways. You can pitch the tarp in many different ways. You can use it with or without a tarp. You can go netless or with a net. Uh, there's just a ton of different options, and we're going to talk about all those different things. Another reason uh, that I love hammocks personally, myself, is uh, they leave a lot less trace. And what I mean by that is the LNT, Leave No Trace principle, which is uh, it decreases the environmental impact by not uh, causing so much damage, to, as long as it's done right. Again, this is another thing that as long as it's done right, the right, the proper straps hung properly. Uh, you know, you're not clearing out a bunch of brush and things underneath you to to make your hang. Uh, you're you're in most cases uh, can be a lot less uh, environmentally environmentally impactful. So I like that about that. And then the last thing is just an elevated perspective. And what I mean by that is uh, you get kind of a higher view of the surroundings you're in. You can kind of feel more. I don't know, you don't feel as enclosed in a hammock that you might feel in a tent. You know, you, now you lose some of that privacy sometimes, but you can kind of, uh, you know, just lay in a hammock and look out and see the woods, see a lake, see a, re a river, a stream. It's pretty darn nice to, uh, to have that perspective. And, you know, you're, you're laying in it, you could sit in it like a chair. Hammocks are pretty cool in that regard for sure. So let's talk about a few uh, differences between tents versus hammocks. Uh, so a tent, like I said, you basically have one configuration. It's just one and done. You may, may be able to take the tarp off of it, but that's pretty much it, or the fly, I mean. Uh, they can't always be customized. Really, they very rarely can be customized unless you use some kind of high-end uh, hammock man or tent manufacturer. Uh, again, they're dependent on the terrain. You've got to have a relatively flat area. A lot of times you only have a single place for gear. You may only have a vestibule or a place up by your head or by your feet. Uh, with a hammock, you have a lot of different options, uh, some add-ons, things that you can uh, get for your gear. Um, it can also be a little bit difficult sometimes with a hammock. For me, uh, again, a tent is harder to get in and out of. Just getting down on the ground, crouching down on, on all fours to get in that tent is difficult. It, it drives me crazy these days, and I really don't enjoy it. And like I said, it could be a little bit harsher on the environment. With a hammock, you could have multiple configurations. Uh, they could be fully customized. They're terrain independent for the most part. Multiple places to store gear. They're easier to get in and out of and easier on in the environment. Now I'm just going to do a quick warning here to all of you. Hammock camping is not for everyone. Not all of you watching this are going to want a hammock camp or be able to hammock camp. Uh, there is still a, a certain demographic of people who just prefer tents, period. And they just, you know, that's how it is. And that is perfectly fine. Hike your own hike, camp your own camp. I'm not trying to tell you why one is better than the other. I'm just trying to tell you my thoughts, my experiences on why I chose hammock camping and why I do it. Now, for some people, it may not be an enjoyable experience at all. You might absolutely hate it. You might think it's just the worst and I get that, uh, you know, I've had some, some bad hangs. I've had some bad nights in a hammock. 
but I've learned from those experiences and I've had some incredibly wonderful nights in my hammock as well, for sure. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of hammocks. Okay, some of the pros here, uh, fast setup and tear down. Never touches the ground. If you do this correctly, uh, you can make sure that your hammock never touches the ground, never gets any dirt or mud on it. You can keep them pretty darn clean. I have yet to clean a hammock I've been using for the last three years now. Uh, I haven't had to clean any mud off of it. It stayed perfectly, perfectly clean. It's been fantastic. Now this is a big one here. Proper lay equals flat sleeping surface. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, I'm going to go into more detail about this, but uh, there are certain ways to lay in a hammock and not lay in a hammock. And when most people think about it, you know, they think of the typical sleeping like a banana, uh, just in, you know, straight up and down in it. Uh, but there are, if you lay perpendicular in a hammock, you're going to get a flatter lay. We'll talk about that. More comfortable, no pressure points. I talked about that. Multiple configuration. Now the market has exploded with options, so what, and there are just there are tons of different hammock manufacturers out there right now. Just a ton. There are so many options. Uh, you can go as minimalistic or as extravagant as you'd like. Uh, you know, it's just uh, the options are unreal. It's it's so cool to be a hammock camper right now. Some of the cons. Uh, they can be costly. A uh, hammock setup can cost you several hundred dollars. And once you get a tarp and things like that, and if you start getting into the, the more expensive, lighter weight tarps, you can talk about lots and lots of money. It can get really up there. But uh, you can also do it relatively budget friendly. It just depends on, on what you want to do, how comfortable you want to be, how light you, you want your pack, all kinds of, of uh, different variables. Doesn't always work well for every situation. Uh, and by that, I mean you don't always have the perfect anchor points. Some places you go, especially when you're in the back country, you're not going to necessarily find two trees that are the perfect distance apart. You may have to condense your, um, you know, condense your setup a little bit or expand it. Uh, that's where learning to adjust the hammock really comes in handy because, you know, setting up in different situations uh, it can be it can be interesting and I've had some situations where I've been backpacking and oh man you know I've had trees that were only like nine feet apart and you know I, I would want them at least 12 to 15 feet apart for a proper a proper setup so it's been interesting uh, in some cases uh, but you have to make do you know you can do it but uh, it's not always the easiest for us for sure Staying warm and dry can be a challenge, that's for sure. Uh, until you really figure out your system and figure out uh, your warmth layers, uh, I've had some very cold nights in the hammock because I tried to skimp, or I tried to do something a, a certain way, and uh, I paid for it. So, you know, we'll talk about that gear in the gear area, but uh, that can be a challenge. Every hang is different, and just this goes back to what I said about the trees being farther apart or f closer together. Uh, the, the geometry is different of every hang, and what I mean by that is the, the angle of the straps, you know, the, the way you, you hang your hammock, the tightness, things like that. Uh, it, it can be sometimes a little bit challenging, but there are tools that can aid you in that, and we'll talk about those. I would still consider hammock camping a niche market uh, from the mainstream is still very much about tents you know when you go to uh, backpacker magazine and you're looking at their gear guide you know, for the current year they don't talk about hammocks very much very little do they talk about hammocks they talk about tents 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 you know but that's because it's, it's still the mainstream and hammocks are kind of a fringe thing I think out there that even though there's a lot of people who do it and it gets more and more popular every day a lot more YouTubers are doing it a lot more um, Facebook groups you know you can find hammock camping info in a lot of different places so it, it is getting bigger but there's still a lot of trepidation about it and a lot of people are just unsure about it that's for sure and the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, improper use of hammocks uh, is it's already causing some issues in some parks and by that I mean parks are closing 
their areas to hammock camping completely because of pro improper hanging people um you know using the wrong straps damaging trees damaging vegetation foliage whatever so improper use can cause some parks to tighten the the regulations or completely ban and that has happened in some states where they've just banned hammocks altogether and that's one thing that I'm trying to bring awareness to people is you know the proper use of hammocks the proper hang and to not you know destroy stuff in the process uh, this should be uh, friendly to the environment just like anything else you do when you're out there backpacking just a few quick hammock camping term terms here uh, some things that you might hear when you hear people talking about hammock camping uh, you're gonna hear about an anchor you're gonna hear about bug net uh, one thing you might hear is CBS which is cold butt syndrome it's kind of a joking little term that people get uh, when they get when their underside gets a little cold in the hammock and it does happen it will happen to you at some point diagonal lays you might hear about Dutchware or bling guy lines over cover or top cover ridge line sag is another thing you might hear about snake skins is a term you may hear suspension tarp top quilt tree huggers under quilt and whoopee slings now I know this seems daunting and overwhelming. I know when I first started learning about hammocks, I was like, whoa, what is all this stuff, man? I, I, I don't know if I, this is for me. This just seems too complicated, but it's really not. Uh, once you learn these terms and, and what they mean and how they apply to you, it, it'll be absolutely fine, I promise. Now, here's, I just made a short gear checklist of, I consider these the, essential, the essentials, the things you're gonna have to have if you wanna do hammock camping. And I notice I didn't mention any specific brands or types here. Uh, all I'm saying is these are the items that you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need the hammock, obviously. That's the part that you lay in. You're going to need suspension. That is the straps. That is the method of hanging to the tree or the anchor points that you're going to be hanging from. Like I said, it could be straps. could be what's called whoopee slings, uh, which are just basically... Um, you know very strong ropes that can be adjusted different ways to hang from different trees and things like that tarp that's going to be your top cover that's going to be your or your fly whatever you want to call it that is your protection from wind rain snow all kinds of things even the sun tarps are absolutely essential when hammock camping just like in a tent you have to have that shelter that protection over you same thing with the hammock rigging line uh, that's the same thing as guy lines that's the part that you will use to tie your uh, your guy lines to your uh, tarp to stake it out you'll have to have some some way to stake out the tarp and uh, you know tighten the pitch insulation that's going to be your sleeping bag or your top quilt or your and or your under quilt uh, I'll talk about all these things but uh, that is basically the things when you think about camping, things that keep you warm. So if you you know if you're used to using a sleeping bag, think of it that way. You know, having a sleeping bag is is your warmth. That's your insulation. That's uh, there's a couple more things when hammock camping that you kind of want to think about. Uh, mainly the under quilt. That's a big one in my opinion. And then there are other accessories, things like uh, things to make setup more simple. That's the Dutchware bling that I mentioned. Uh, those are basically little pieces of gear that can uh, be used for tightening the guy lines, tightening the stakes down, and tightening your straps and things like that. Uh, just pieces to help make things easier. Okay, so let's talk about some different brands of hammocks. Uh, like I said, there are a million different options out there. And these are just a handful of ones that I know of and that I trust. Uh, the first one, that comes to mind for me is Dream Hammock. That is a cottage company, and what a cottage means is they are a small, basically homegrown business, uh, literally done out of someone's home right here in Ohio, and they hand create these uh, right here in, in the U.S., right here in Ohio, hand make every single one of their hammocks. And I have one of their hammocks. Uh, this, here's a picture of it. Uh, this is the Dream Hammock Raven. 
absolutely fantastic piece of gear. I've done videos on this hammock. You've seen this hammock if you've watched my videos before. I sleep in this thing a lot. This is my favorite hammock by far. I love this thing. It's absolutely great. But it's not the only hammock out there. There are other brands, Warbonnet out of Colorado, Dutchware out of Pennsylvania. Uh, some other more popular brands you may have heard of, like Hennessy and Clark Jungle Hammocks. Those are um, they are crossbar hammocks, like bridge hammocks. Uh, basically, those have a bridge spread at the ends, uh, make it a little bit wider, more like a bed or a cot. And then I did throw these on here, even though I don't consider them uh, sleeping hammocks or camping hammocks. Eagle's Nest Outfitters, or ENO, and Grand Trunk. Uh, those, it, it, you know, if you want to start out and, and, and you have a very small budget, uh, you can use these parachute hammocks to camp in. It is feasible, though I do not recommend it. Um, I tried as an experiment uh, recently, uh, a year or two ago, to spend over an overnight in a Grand Trunk parachute hammock and see how it would work out. It just was not pleasant. I was cold. I was uh, uncomfortable. It just it wasn't it wasn't a good experience. And I probably could have made it better, but uh, you know those hammocks just aren't meant to be slept in. They're meant to be napped in, you know, lounged in. That's what those brands of hammocks are for. So what are some good things about the cottage vendors that I've talked about here, like Dream Hammock and War Bonnet and and Dutchware? Well, you know they are super high quality. They're handmade. Uh, they're not assembly line they are absolutely fantastic pieces of gear they are more expensive typically but they are worth every penny also they're extremely customizable so they have the extreme customization of being able to choose the colors that you want down to the the stitching in some instances you know if you want a bright green hammock or a fuchsia hammock you can get those from these companies and that's what's so fun about cottage vendors they have so many fabrics to choose from, so many cool things. It just makes it absolutely awesome. Uh, it's just a super fun experience to have something so neat. And now there's even things like uh, you know custom printing on tarps uh, with designs and, and actually images and things. They're getting very, very cool with these designs. Also with Cottage Vendors, you get... Uh, a very personal service, uh, very good customer service. You know, I talked to Randy and Deanna when I was going through the hammock creation process, and I would talk to them through email. They were sending me emails at you know eleven o'clock at night. They, these aren't just nine to five people or people across the the ocean that uh, you never see or hear from. These are people that are, you know, there for you and they care about you as a customer and they want you to be happy, and they will do whatever they can to make to make things right for you. That is awesome in my opinion. Cottage vendors, a lot of these are made in the USA. A lot of them have only online only storefronts, so they don't have the overhead of the brick and mortar store. They just have the online storefront, so that can help reduce costs a little bit. And like I said, that really helps with the customer service. Uh, one thing about cottage vendors, they can have long lead times because they are small shops. So if you're looking to you know, maybe go out uh, soon, you know, like a month or two, you, you may not have your hammock in time. You know, you really want to kind of plan ahead, plan four to six months in advance. Uh, think about ordering your hammock. Uh, I typically recommend to people, you know, if you get some money for Christmas and you want to go hammock camping that summer, order on Christmas Day. Go out there on their website and, and just get it purchased so they can get working on it. That's what I did, and I had mine before the, the warm season came for us, which was great. So let's talk about the hammock types. Uh, there are several. You can get them with or without a bug net. The bug net can be attached or removable. In my case, uh, I have the Dream Hammock Raven. The bug net is completely removable. So if I'm going in a, in a time of the year where I know there's not going to be any bugs, I can take that off, reduce that weight open up my hammock more. And then if I know I'm going to be a buggy in the middle of summer, I'm going to be black fly season, mosquito season, I'm going to want that, um, you know, that net for sure. You can also get uh, custom covers, top covers for your hammocks. So uh, in, your, in the winter months, you know, you can get 
replace out that net with an actual piece of fabric that zips on. Mine has that as well. So it basically completely encloses you except for the head end where there is a little bit of netting, obviously, so you can breathe. And uh, But, you know, it it's, uh, really improves on the warmth. Uh, it, it gains you about 10 to 15 degrees of extra warmth from what I've experienced, just that extra piece of fabric. There are also double or single layers. Uh, I have never had a double layer hammock. I've always had single layer, but a lot of people do get the double layers, and a lot of cases they use those for, basically, you can use it to put a pad uh, in between the layers. Uh, you can So that gives you some extra warmth, and it helps, you know, expand the hammock sometimes. And some people like to have that extra security of a little bit more weight support. So um, if you're, you know, need a little bit more fabric, to support you there, you know, you can get a double layer hammock there. Gathered end is what you think about when you see the typical uh, E&O style hammocks, like in the picture here. This is a, a gr the Grand Trunk. This is actually the Grand Trunk hammock that I slept in overnight once. Uh, that is a gathered end hammock, and that's just the fabric is gathered at, on the ends. And then there's what's called the bridge hammock. Bridge hammocks have two poles on either end where instead of being gathered at the end, they're uh, wide. And that makes it more like a bed or a cot. It kind of cradles you. A lot of people really like the, the bridge hammocks. Uh, there are a couple different options. Clark makes them. Dutch Wear makes some. Like I said, I've never owned a bridge hammock, so I, I can't really attest to it. I don't know. But I think they would be kind of cool. To, to try that out sometime. So maybe I will try out a bridge hammock. And then lastly, I don't have an example here, but uh, multi-point hammocks. And those are kind of a new thing that have just kind of come out on the scene. And those are the type of hammocks, uh, you may have seen pictures of them, where they're uh, more than two points, so they might connect to three trees. Uh, and they're kind of, they're usually a lot bigger, uh, they're kind of like a, a tent, a suspended tent, and uh, you can actually sleep several people in these things. And uh, they're suspended like a hammock, but they may be like a tent on top with a, with a covering on top. They're really, really cool. Uh, they're very, very expensive from what I've seen. I haven't seen them so much lately. I don't know if the popularity has kind of died out, the novelty of them has died out or not. But uh, again, it's probably not something I'm going to own, but uh, they are kind of neat. And, uh, you know, I'd like to try it out just once or twice, maybe. All right, let's talk about straps and suspension. This is uh, really important. So there are several different options to straps. Uh, of course, there's uh, Eagle's Nest Outfitter has what's called Atlas straps. All of these are, you know, fabric, nylon-style straps. Grand Trunk has tree slings. Uh, a, a company called Kamek makes straps as well. Now, Dutchware has many different options of straps. He, he has uh, even ones that are Kevlar. He has ones that are um, like a multi-thread material that holds several, several hundred pounds up to like a thousand pounds. They're super incredibly strong. Uh, um, I just have regular nylon straps. I think they hold up to 500 pounds, something like that. They work great for me. They have not broke or ripped or anything they're they're super fantastic they they I've been using them for eight nine years now the same ones and I've had no problems whatsoever you can also use uh, carabiners or descending rings now make sure if you're using carabiners that you're using climbing carabiners not just those cheap ones you get uh, you know at, at, as a novelty don't use those uh, but you can use the, the, the actual climbing ones, like Black Diamond makes some really nice climbing carabiners. You can use those. They work great. I, I did use those back in the days when I first started hammock camping. Buckle systems. Uh, I have some examples in this pictures here. In these pictures, you're going to see some different types of buckles. I have uh, right there what's called the beetle buckle in the lower portion of the screen. Those are from Dutchware. Those are titanium buckles. They actually go onto the straps and they make adjusting the straps a breeze. You can literally just slide them up and down the strap 
and you're good to go. And then you hang your uh, hammock suspension, which is the, the, the silver rope there you see in that picture. That's the suspension going to the hammock itself. I am a big fan of, of the bling. Now, a lot of people have uh, shied away from it. Not a lot of people, but some people I know have shied away from it. And uh, they're going to lighter weight op. They're even lighter and uh, less hardware dependent options. There are fabric things that you can get. There are uh, Dyneema buckles that you can get. Uh, lots and lots of options. Whoopie slings. I mentioned those earlier. Whoopie slings are kind of a classic way to hang a hammock. They are Dyneema ropes. It, the only the best way to describe them is if if you've ever seen the the Chinese. Uh, finger trap basically it's the way the weave works and the harder you pull on it with your fingers in it the tighter the grip gets and you can't get out of it but if you push in and then and you can immediately come out that's the same idea as the whoopee slings uh, the, the tighter the tension on them the stronger they become so when you're laying in that hammock it's locked down it's locked in the place but as soon as you get out of the hammock then the weights lifted and you can move the whoopee slings back and forth adjust them however you need them they're really really cool whoever invented those was very very smart and the fact that they can hold several hundred pounds just boggles my mind it's absolutely crazy to me you can also do DIY straps you can go someplace like Harbor Freight Tools and make your own now you want to make sure that you are getting the properly weight rated type of strap something that's uh, weighted to a few hundred pounds at least uh, you know, preferably 500 to 1,000 pounds, so you have extra protection. When you think about the geometry of a hammock, uh, when you put the kind of weight and, and stress and, and pressure, even if you're a lightweight person, all that stress is multiplied uh, with the downforce. Of it. There's a lot to it, a lot of physics, a lot of geometry to hammocks that's also very mind-boggling if you're not good on math. And then I always tell people, use at least one inch straps. Some areas require at least two inches of straps, and uh, that is to protect the trees. If you use something like rope or really thin cordage, you're not only putting yourself in danger, but you're also going to cause damage to the trees, and that's one of the reasons that uh, you have to think about uh, leave no trace. You do not want to damage the bark of a tree. You don't want to damage the trunk. You definitely don't want to do that. So. Use those at least one inch straps whenever you're hanging. Uh, keep the tree safe. Do not damage the tree in any way. Okay, so let's talk about another essential part of a hammock camping setup, and that is your tarp. And I could go on for hours talking about tarps and setting them up. I've done some videos on tarp setup, and I'll probably do more in the future because this is such a, an important topic that people really need to understand. But Basically, there are several different shapes of tarps. You have your asymmetric, which is uh, what you see up there in the top, the triangular shaped. Uh, it's, it's very minimalistic coverage. Uh, it doesn't protect you that much from wind and incoming precipitation. It's just basically very minimalist protection. Um, really more for if you know it's not going to rain, that kind of a thing. Uh, I've been in some downpours with an asymmetrical tarp, and it was not fun. There's also the di diamond-shaped tarps. Uh, hex is a very popular shape. Uh, with, that is what is in the second picture there. It is a. It's it's kind of like a rectangular, but it, it is. It has a kind of a catenary cut on the sides. Uh, hex tarps, in my opinion, they're my favorite uh, because uh, just the great shape, and I love getting the right pitch with those. You can do rectangular as well. And then of course there's four season tarps with what's called you know, doors. And basically when you get a, a tarp with doors, uh, it covers you on the sides but it also has flaps on each side that you can close and open. And you can close those and protect yourself. Uh, they're great in the winter, you know, keeping some of the cold out or a severe thunderstorm, things like that. You don't want precipitation blowing underneath you, uh, underneath the tarp, things like that. So you can close up those doors, and that really does help. I, I'm using a tarp with doors now, and I take it pretty much year-round with me now, not just in the winter, but 
also in the summer I've used it in multiple different situations and I can't uh, really I don't think I ever want to go back to a tarp with outdoors now let's talk about the tarp uh, tarp there are many different tarp materials this is which where I could go on and on and on but I'll just kind of briefly touch on the different types of tarps that are out there you have different options you have your polyester or sil poly you have nylon or sil nylon and what I mean with the sil is basically silicone impregnated uh, the material actually has silicone in inside of it that uh, helps with uh, water repellency and then of course there is Dyneema composite fiber that is uh, all the raids these days and uh, it's also the most expensive piece of gear that you can possibly get DCF is incredibly expensive it's also super lightweight super strong windproof waterproof DCF is amazing stuff it's it's I know I own several different uh, DCF products I have bags uh, all kinds of bags and things like that I do not have a DCF tarp yet um, because I haven't uh, wanted to spend the money. <laughs> so I've been using the same tarp for a few years now. But uh, I'll tell you, the the DCF tarps, uh, they weigh just a few ounces. They, they weigh almost nothing. So if you're looking for a light pack with a hammock setup, you know, you want to look at the DCF tarp if you can, uh, if you can you're, uh, factor it into your budget for sure. And if you don't want to break the bank, with your tarp setup you can always do a DIY setup you can go to Walmart and get a cheap ten dollar tarp and you can use that and I know people who've done that I have friend I have a friend who is um, a very budget savvy guy and he loves to DIY stuff and he did a DIY tarp setup and it worked it worked great for him and and uh, you know <laughs> he was really good with it and he got it staked down nicely had a great night's sleep in his DIY tarp. You don't have to break the bank on this gear. Different types of pitches you might want to do. You might want to do a loose or a tight pitch, just depending on the weather. If it's going to be windy and rainy, pitch your tarp tight. If it's going to be, you know, you think it's going to be a starry night, you don't think it's going to rain, but maybe there's a chance, pitch it loose. And by loose, I mean farther out. You'll see in this picture here, I kind of have t uh, the tarp pitched a little bit tightly because this was a, a winter evening and I knew the winds were going to be cold, the winds were going to be whipping through the campsite, uh, um, you know, coming in from the side there. So I had it kind of pitched down. But there, are, you know, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can do what's called a porch mode. Let me show you a picture of the porch mode. This is called porch mode. And basically what that means is pitching one side down and then pitching the other side up uh, like you would a tarp uh, for a picnic or something like that uh, I used my tent poles in this particular application and made what you know made a porch now in this case I was able to sit in the hammock or sit under the hammock and cook I was able to just to lounge under there you know this particular day was blue and sunny and I didn't really need to set up a porch mode but I did just in case and uh, it, was, it was absolutely fantastic. Porch mode is a really cool option when you have a hex or rectangular style tarp. You can do a lot of things with, your, with a porch mode setup. And something called snakeskins. Snakeskins are these little fabric pieces I have up here in the top corners of my tarp. And basically they are a method of storing your tarp. And basically they are just as they sound, they're pieces of fabric or mesh that look like snakeskins, uh, and you basically roll up the tarp inside, uh, and you pull those sleeves over the tarp, and it just compacts the tarp down. It works really great. I have mesh snakeskins from Hammock Gear, and they work fantastically because if the tarp is wet and I'm trying to pack up and get out of camp and get on the trail, I can use those snakeskins, wrap up my tarp, throw it in the back outside of my pack where I have a, a mesh pocket on the back of my pack and then uh, you know as the air goes the air flows through that mesh it dries the tarp out as I'm walking through the day and a lot of times uh, I'll have a really soaking wet tarp as I leave camp by the time I get to camp in the evening to set up 
my tarps dry because it's been uh, aerating, you know, through the mesh all day long. So that's kind of nice. I really like the mesh snakeskins a lot, but there are lots of different options on those as well. Okay, when it comes to rigging line and guy lines, there are lots of options here too. You can use non-stretch cord. You want to use non-stretch cord. Something like what's called Zingit or Dyneema or Reflect It. Now, go out and look at DutchwareGear.com, a site like that. Uh, he has all different kinds of cordage options. That will give you an idea of the kind of cord that you want to use. You want to use this type of cord for your tarp guy lines. If you've ever staked out a tent, you know that they have guy lines that you use to batten down the tent to keep it, you know, from blowing away in the wind or from blowing around in a wind or in a storm or things like that. Same deal with the tarp. You, you stake it down. So you would tie the cordage to your tarp and then you tie the other ends to stakes and you pitch it out. So like we talked about the loose pitch or the tight pitch, that's where you would use this cordage here. Avoid paracord. Do not use paracord. It stretches when it's wet. Paracord is a great stuff in certain applications, but you do not want to use it for any kind of guy lines or rigging for a hammock or a tarp. It's People do use it, but I highly discourage against it. Use one of these non-stretch cords. Zingit is my preferred one. Reflected is also great. Reflected is great stuff for, you know, if you want to see your guy lines, you know, you can shine a light on them and, and they reflect back at you. Those are great. I talked about Dutchware Bling, the titanium hardware, and I have a picture of that here in the middle of the screen, that little silver looking piece there. Just another way to make life easier when you're staking out your guy lines for your tarp. Uh, you can buy these little pieces of hardware and there's all different kinds that Dutch has. And there's other companies that have them now as well. And everything from plastic pieces to di uh, titanium to you know stainless steel or whatever and everything in between and just some ways to make life easier when you're out there on the trail uh, if you're trying to set up a, a tarp in the rain and get your hammock set up uh, you want life to be as easy as possible so you, you know having these little aids uh, really can make life a lot better I use something on my ridge line for my tarp called uh, the wa a wasp which is from Dutchware and then I use a, a Dutch hook on the other end so it's literally unravel my cordage wrap around a tree hook on one end go to the other end tie around the tree use the wasp to cause the tension and then I just tie around it and boom you know it's less than a minute I've got a ridge line set up so I love the hardware. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And a lot of people don't. So there are a lot of people out there who are purists. They don't want the hardware. But uh, for me, I recommend it. And then, of course, your stakes. Stakes in our personal preference, you know, whatever works for you. A lot of people choose different things. Uh, titanium shepherd's hooks I, I would say I recommended those and at one time I did recommend the shepherd's hooks but I found more recently that those things really bend pretty easily uh, titanium is great stuff but it is a little bit pliable I wouldn't recommend those these days now I would recommend uh, something more like a, a V stake or a Y stake uh, I would even say an MSR groundhog style stake but uh, I've even had those snap on me recently. So I'm still in search of the perfect stake. I have not quite found it yet. Uh, I know it's out there. Uh, I just don't know where. Okay, let's talk about staying dry. Staying dry is super, super important. It's the most important thing when you're out there. You want to be dry, especially if it's cold. You do not want to get wet. And unlike a tent where you can, you know, enclose yourself, you know, you got to be a little bit more uh, cognizant of what you're doing when you have a hammock. So there are some ways to ensure that you're going to stay dry. You can create what's called drip lines or break points. Uh, basically, what I have shown in this picture here is a, an example of a drip line. And that is just tying an extra piece of cordage around your suspension, uh, whether it's around the strap or a cord or whatever you're using. 
and uh, it will cause a break in the suspension which water will run down and instead of rolling down and going down your straps and your suspension into your into your hammock into your head into your neck <laughs> it'll drip onto the ground and these really do work I've used these several times and drip lines are a lifesaver they really really are awesome fantastic fantastic idea you know absolutely great also since you don't really have a floor like you do normally in a tent you have to be a little creative there as well you can create what's called a ground sheet or a floor mat you can use a tent ground sheet um, those are perfectly fine but you can also use Tyvek pieces of Tyvek which is uh, that wrap that you put on a house uh, so the vapor barrier stuff those work fantastically and actually you can buy sheets of Tyvek from DutchwareGear.com uh, that are the perfect size I've been carrying Tyvek with me for years I just use that to you know put underneath my hammock and I put my gear on it uh, I can take off my shoes and walk on it and not get mud all over the place Tyvek really is great stuff and like I said it's keeps the moisture and water out so it's great and it's a pretty cheap alternative as well you want to make sure you stay dry and keep your gear dry if you have down uh, insulation such as a down under quilt or um, top quilt do not get it wet make sure that down you know once you get down wet it is a, a very difficult to dry out and it basically loses all of its heat retention value uh, unlike synthetic, synthetics can still keep you a little bit warm when wet, be, uh, you know, but uh, down just loses all of its warmth capability. Also, just like in a tent, you're going to have condensation sometimes, depending on the atmospheric conditions. So you want to reduce that condensation. You want to make sure that you uh, have a proper ventilation, uh, ventilation through the tarp, through the hammock, if you have a top cover on the hammock, you want to make sure that you um, have some kind of a, at least a little bit of an opening there to get some air through airflow through. And if you're in really extreme cold conditions, you might want to use something called a frost bib. And this is uh, just go to Shugemery Ch Shugemery's channel and uh, you'll see what a frost bib is. But it's basically a piece of fabric that you can hang underneath you. Uh, if you're in conditions where you're you're breathing and your breath is causing uh, you know moisture and you can see your breath and it's that cold well those droplets will drop down they will get on your insulation they'll get on your quilt on your sleeping bag whatever and get it wet so if you use a frost bib uh, that catches all the moisture and and you know that's kind of an advanced thing but uh, you know if you're gonna be camping in super cold weather uh, consider using that for sure all right so let's talk about insulation I've been talking a lot about uh, different types of insulation things to keep you warm uh, you got to be a little bit more creative when it comes to a hammock unlike uh, a tent a tent you can pretty much get a sleeping bag or a top quilt and you're good you know and a nice pad and you're good to go now I always tell people when you're in a hammock kind of think of it as uh, the same principle as a bridge uh, a bridge for cars you know you see those signs uh, you always see the signs when you're driving over a bridge that says bridge ices before roadway well there's a reason for that that's because you have air going over the bridge you have air going under the bridge so there's air going all the way around the bridge causing it to cool down much faster unlike the regular ground which is retaining some heat retaining some warmth from the sun or whatever uh, that's why bridges freeze first it's it's just a uh, it's uh, science <laughs> But same deal with a hammock. You're just like a bridge. So you've got air going above you, you've got air going underneath you. So you need to account to that. Uh, so you need something not only on top of you, but you need something underneath you. Sleeping pads do work, but in my opinion, they don't work very well. I've used them in the past, but they, they kind of drive me crazy in, in a hammock because they tend to slide all over. Uh, and as well, your extremities can remain exposed. I've, I've had a freezing cold shoulder when I was trying to use a pad. I uh, just had some bad experiences. Now, like, remember I talked about those double layer hammocks. Those probably work better for a sleeping pad. It's not going to shift as much. Um, and so I haven't tested that myself, but uh, I do believe that that would probably 
work a lot better in that situation. I recommend an underquilt. I've been using underquilt for several years now, and basically what an underquilt is, is it's like a sleeping bag that goes underneath you, or a quilt that goes underneath you. It cradles you from underneath, and it literally wraps you in warmth. Uh, these can be synthetic or down. I have a down one. In, in this picture, I have a, a, a down three-quarter underquilt. They're getting cheaper, but it's still a fairly large investment, especially if it's down and if you're doing a full-size quilt, uh, underquilt, those can get up there in, in price pretty quick. But there is a company called Dream Hammock, or I'm sorry, there is a company called Hammock Gear, uh, that I've been talking about. They have an e economy line of underquilts and top quilts, and their economy line is fantastic. I actually have a top quilt of theirs that is the econ line, and it's super warm, down, fantastic. So maybe take a look at their econo line if you're looking for budget. If you really want to get budget, you can look at the uh, Eagle's Nest Outfitters Ember, uh, the Enlightened Equipment Prospect. Those are a little bit less expensive and then like I talked about the hammock gear incubator and econ versions so um, I highly recommend hammock gear it's a fantastic company fantastic brand really really cool stuff and then once your underside is protected and, and warm then you need that top layer this you can use a uh, what's called a top quilt or you can use a regular sleeping bag a sleeping bag is good because a lot of people already have them. They work great, and you you know you can get a nice synthetic twenty degree bag for cheap, and uh, it'll keep you nice and warm, and it works pretty well. Uh, the only bad thing about sleeping bags is they have hardware on them, so they have zippers on them, which could puncture through your hammock fabric. Uh, I've, I've never really heard of that happening, but I, I'm sure it has happened. I know people that have actually had hammocks rip out from underneath them in the past. So, uh, you know, if you can get something without that hardware, that's better. And that's where top quilts come in. And those are basically a sleeping bag without the zipper, without any hardware. Uh, for one thing, they, they weigh less, and in addition to not having that hardware on them. So they weigh less, and they wrap around you, and they don't have that layer, uh, like a mummy bag. When you're sleeping in a mummy bag, um, you, you get inside it. It's like a tube. Well, when you think about it, when you're laying on that part, the part underneath you, you're crushing all that insulation. And basically, you're losing all that heat value, all that warmth. Uh, so that's why you have a sleeping pad, not just to keep you cushy from the hard ground, but you need an insulated pad, in most cases, to keep you warm from underneath. So top quilts eliminate that altogether, and they're basically open like a blanket but they wrap around you and you don't have to worry about that unused insulation piece underneath you that's not doing you any good in, in any case anyway so it, it prevents that uh, they just quilts are just a, a really good option they work not only great for hammocks but a lot of people are using quilts now in tents because they realize the value of the lighter weight and uh, you know have the hardware to fiddle with no breaking zippers or things like that you can also get what's called the Costco down quilts or the Kohl's down throw. Now these are really inexpensive uh, down blankets that they sell seasonably at some of these um, stores like Costco, Kohl's, Sam's Club, places like that. You can find these really cool deals on, uh, they are down. Now they don't go down super cold. Uh, these are good to about 50 degrees or so, but uh, they are really good you know, budget options. You can get, a lot of people buy several of these and they use them. In the, I use mine in the summer months. It's just, I want something over the top of me, um, even if it's 60, 70 degrees at night. But, uh, you know, I don't want to be sleeping in a 20 degree bag or a 20 degree quilt. So I just have that light little down blanket to put over me, just enough to have over me, and it works fantastically. So look at the Costco down quilts. Uh, they are seasonal, I believe. You know, you have to look kind of in the fall or winter for them, but uh, they're like a twenty-dollar option. And of course, there are also things called peapod systems, which are combinations of uh, t 
top quilt and under quilt that are all one piece uh, wrap around systems um, outdoor vitals did make one i don't know if they still make this or not uh, at the time that i made this presentation they were making the peapod system but i don't know if that's still around but uh check that out and you can check out outdoor vitals and see if they still make those now staying warm is critical when you're hammock camping i can't stress that enough and the same principles apply here as they would when you're tent camping. You can get cold in a tent just like you can a hammock. Uh, and once you go to bed cold, you're going to stay cold. So in addition to the things like bring proper insulation, base layer, synthetic mid-layer, fresh pair of dry, loose-fitting socks. Uh, always have a, a dry pair of socks to change into so that your feet stay warm. And make sure they're loose-fitting. You don't want to cut off the circulation to your feet. You want to have nice loose fitting socks that's very very important also have a hat or headwear uh, a nice beanie uh, and a buff a buffs work really great you can keep those around your neck pull them up over your face and keep your uh, face warm they're fantastic don't go to bed cold that is so critically important especially when hammock camping I always tell people if you are cold before you get in your hammock you're gonna be cold all night so there are several different ways to make yourself warmer. You can, you know, do jumping jacks, run in place, do something to get your, you know, don't work up a sweat, but get your body blood pumping, get your body warm, get it moving. You can also do some things like, uh, a lot of people don't like to do this, but eat chocolate, eat a Snickers bar before you go to bed. It, uh, your body will have to process that sugar and it'll work to process that sugar and, uh, keep you a little bit warmer. Don't drink alcohol if you are wanting to stay warm. Alcohol do does not make you warmer. It make make you think you're warmer, but it really doesn't. It actually st will strip the warmth from you, and you'll end up being much more colder in the middle of the night. Always be careful of overheating. Uh, you can also make yourself too warm. So you know if if things are start getting if you're actually getting too hot, loosen some things up, take off a layer. Take off the socks, whatever you need to do, but you want to avoid overheating as well. I talked about top covers a little bit earlier in the presentation. Here's an example of my top cover on my Dream Hammock Raven. Like I said, it's a piece of fabric that zips onto the hammock itself. It can be the same material or different material. It seals in extra warmth. It gives you a few extra degrees of warmth as opposed to bug netting, and it can kind of just envelop you and uh, just like being more like in a tent, it's more reminiscent of being in a tent. You're surrounded by fabric as opposed to being more open. There are also things called winter socks, and that is a piece of fabric that wraps around your hammock. Dutchware uh, did sell those. I believe he still does. But that is a way to wrap around. You can pull that around your yourself, wraps around your entire hammock, and kind of like the top cover, but it covers the entire hammock itself another way to keep you warm and then in the warmer months your bug netting will, will keep you warm as well so if it's you know going to be a little bit warmer uh, just leave your bug netting on that'll keep you a little bit more insulated as well so other tricks that I give to people to, you know to try to tell them to keep warm chemical warmers work great uh, the little shake things that's uh, cause a chemical reaction Take a few of those, put them in your gloves, put them in your pants, <laughs> uh, put them in your socks, uh, keep your feet warm. Wherever you have extremities that get cold, you know, put, your, put those chemical warmers in there. Just be careful not to burn yourself. They do get very hot, so you may want to wrap them in something or something like that. You can also put a sit pad under your feet if, uh, if your feet are getting cold. You know, give yourself a little bit of insulation there. There is the old warm water in the Nalgene technique which people have been using in tents for years and that is basically using a Nalgene bottle with warm water hot not boiling but warm or hot and you make sure that that is sealed you can put that down inside your quilt or your sleeping bag and give you some extra warmth and be very careful that the lid is secure and there's no ice or any buildup or anything inside it and make sure that that is not going to leak because if if the Nalgene bottle leaks out water 
you you could risk um, you know completely soaking your insulation. That's a very big problem, especially if it's cold. You do not want to soak your insulation. And then this last technique I stole from Shug Emery. Uh, I did not think this up, but I use it all the time in the colder months, and it's called the jacket wrap technique. And basically, when I go to bed, I take my down jacket off because I don't want to sleep in my down jacket necessarily. But I take it off, and I put it at the end of my hammock where my feet go. I pull the sleeves inside the uh, jacket, and then I zip the jacket up, and... That gives me like another layer of insulation. It's basically like another quilt, another under quilt or top quilt. Uh, it's basically like a mini pea pod. It wraps around, and it, you would not believe the kind of heat that that traps in there and how warm it'll make your feet. It really does work. Absolutely ingenious. Whoever thought that up. Um, again, I can't take credit for that, but uh, I passed that on to people, and it blows people away every time I show them that because they're like, wow, I no idea how awesome that was. It's a great idea. In the warmer months, you're going to want to keep the bugs out. So definitely want to have that bug netting attached or removable. Bite throughs can still happen. Since you're in a fabric and you're suspended in the air, bugs can still get to you. I've had mosquitoes bite through my hammock before, right through the underside of my hammock. I, and I felt, I've actually felt them. And that is not fun. And that's not fun at all. So what I always recommend to people is to use permethrin, which is uh, absolutely amazing stuff for repelling bugs. It repels mosquitoes. It repels ticks. Permethrin is absolutely great. It's safe on materials. So you can soak your hammock in that permethrin. You can spray it or soak it. I always spray mine. And that keeps the bugs away. It keeps the ticks off. It keeps the mosquitoes away. It's fantastic stuff. It has to be reapplied. I reapply mine about every year. But uh, I use permethrin on clothes, socks, shoes. I spray it on just about everything. And it has kept me tick-free for years. I mean, I have been in tick-infested places and not had one tick on me. I can't stress enough how awesome permethrin is. Now, the stuff is unsafe for cats it, uh, in the liquid form. It, I guess it will kill them. It does something in their nervous system, which is a little scary, but uh, it's safe for other animals like dogs. Uh, apparently, it's not too harmful to people. Hopefully, they won't come out in a study in 10 years and say that it's going to kill you, cause cancer, or whatever, but uh, it, it's from a natural extract, um, so it really shouldn't be that bad of stuff, but uh, I, I've used it a lot, and at least I don't have Lyme disease, so <laughs> that's a good thing. Let's talk about getting the perfect hang. The perfect hang is basically you want the angle of your suspension, your straps, your ropes, whatever, to be 30 degrees for optimal comfort. That's called the perfect hang. And one way you can tell if you have the 30 degree angle is to use what's called the gun method. And basically, all that is is taking your thumb and your index finger like this and just making a gun or an L, whatever you want to say. And that is a, roughly a 30 degree angle. So if your suspension is hanging this way and you hold your fingers like that, if it touches here and touches here on that angle, you've got a perfect hang in suspension. If you're off down here or way up here, then your suspension's off, you're going to have a bad lay, you're going to have an uncomfortable night, it may be too tight, it may be too loose, you have to adjust your suspension, maybe adjust the height of your straps. You have to play around with your, with your, uh, with your setup. There are a lot of different aids that can help you to get that best angle. Uh, there's a smartphone app called the Ultimate Hang Calculator, which you can actually plug in values for the height, of your hammock, the distance between the trees, it'll tell you exactly how to hang the hammock. It is an awesome, awesome thing. I recommend it. It's free. Go out there and download the Ultimate Hang Calculator right now if you're even thinking about doing any hammock camping, for sure. Also, you want to elevate your foot end of the hammock slightly. 
And what this does, it prevents you from sliding down inside the hammock all night. I've learned that over the years is uh, just elevating my feet just slightly gets me kind of the right angle. I kind of just sink right into the middle of the hammock and get a perfect sleep. Always want to use a ridge line. Ridge lines are built into most camping hammocks nowadays. That is basically the piece of cordage that goes from one end of the inside to the other end of the inside. And it's uh, used for many things. It keeps the, the top cover or the bug netting off your face. Uh, you can hang things from the ridge line. Many, many different uses for the ridge line for sure. But that also helps keep the structural integrity of the hammock. Now there are just a few things that I think you should, everyone should know before they go out hammock camping. Really should know this stuff before you, you do any kind of camping. But I would say have a basic knowledge of knots. Have a good understanding of knots because you use knots, potentially you can use them quite a bit when hammock camping. You don't have to if you're using the hardware, but it's always good to know knots as a backup. Uh, I don't know that many knots, but I know enough to keep me safe. And um, I use some basic knots for, you know, rigging out my guy lines and things like that. Something else I always recommend to people is to test new gear in your backyard first. Never take out a piece of gear that you've never used before and try to take it out into the backcountry. Test it. Test it either in your yard or if you don't have a place to hang trees, hang from, you know, if you don't have trees to hang from, go out into your local park, you know, right next to your car or something test that gear, make sure you know how to hang it because the last thing you want to do is be out in the back country and not know how to use your gear, not know how to hang it up, not know how to set it up. You could be caught in a storm or who knows what, caught in the dark and it could just be a, a really bad situation. And if you hang it incorrectly, you can not only damage the gear, but you could really hurt yourself as well. Try different configurations, whatever works best for you. Like I said earlier, some places have restrictions. Check your local regulations to make sure hammocks are legal. And most importantly, understand and practice leave no trace principles. Never damage trees, never create a location for a hammock, and leave the location better than you found it. So just like with tent camping and any other kind of camping, make sure that you're taking care of the environment. Don't damage any kind of vegetation or anything like that just because you found the perfect hammock spot only hang in a place where you know you're not going to damage anything and leave the place better than you found it because that is one of the biggest principles of leave no trace for sure you always want to be aware of hazards and unseen dangers when you're hammock camping consider weight limitations of your hammock and your gear never anchor to dead trees uh, you know, I hear every single year there, there seems lately that there is deaths of someone. Uh, it always seems to be children, which is just terrible, who have anchored to an unsecure anchor point, like a pole or a dead tree or something like that. And it ends up hitting them and, and killing them. Uh, that can definitely happen to you. So don't ever, ever anchor to a, a dead tree or a an unsafe looking anchor point. Always look for healthy, healthy uh, trees and vegetation. Beware of widow makers. Widow makers are just like with, with a tent camping. You want to look above you and make sure that there is no dead branches, nothing above you that could fall in the middle of the night and crush you and kill you. Now that's a lot harder to do in the winter when everything looks dead. Uh, I've had some, some instances where I really wasn't sure if the trees were dead or not. I had no idea. Uh, I just kind of had to pray that they, were, they weren't. Uh, but in the summer, it's a lot easier. You can tell exactly what, uh, what widow makers are, where they are. Um, sometimes it's not an option. Uh, you may have to hang in a, in a relatively dangerous location. I've done that before too. Just be aware of your surroundings and try to do the best you can. Avoid dangerous locations at all costs. And, you know, don't just do something just for the thrill factor of it, like over a cliff or over rushing water or directly over big rocks. Don't be like these people in this picture. Uh, it's just stupidity. It's dumb. There's no reason for it. It's dangerous. And, you know, it's really unsafe stuff like this is what causes deaths. It causes injuries. And it can cause pe places to ban hammock camping. And just like any other kind of camping, beware of lightning, 
beware of wild animals. Um, lightning, if it strikes a tree, can do a lot of damage to you. It could kill you. Strong wind can cause trees to come down. Beware of uh, wind storms. Uh, if you have thunderstorms hit you in the middle of the night, stay alert, stay awake. It, it may suck the next day. You may be tired, but be alert of what's going on because it may save your life. A lot of people ask, where does my gear go? Uh, with an intent, you can put the gear pretty much anywhere. Well, with a hammock, you have options as well. You have ridgeline organizers. You have peak shelves and bags. You have gear slings. You can hang your, pan your pack under your hammock. From the suspension, you can hang it from a tree. You could put it on the uh, Tyvek un right underneath your hammock. I've done that several times in, in warmer months. Lots of options. You are not out of luck when it comes to storing your gear. You just have to be a little bit more creative. There are plenty of options for storing your gear. Then there's fun extra stuff, of course. There's aftermarket products that you can get. You can get party lights for your hammock, multimedia hooks so you can watch your, your phone or your tablet, gear slings for putting your gear. Uh, there's all kinds of accessories and cool stuff. And that's one thing I really love about hammocks is just they're so customizable and there's so many accessories that you can get for them that you can't get in a tent. You know, it's just all that cool, fun stuff that makes the experience more enjoyable. And if you're out with friends, you know, and you want to have the party lights out, I've done that before. It's super fun. Uh, I, I've hung my hammock uh, in the woods uh, deep in the backcountry around Christmas one time and uh, had Christmas lights hanging around my ridge line. And that was a lot of fun. It was, it was just, it was super cool. It really was. Totally unnecessary, but it was fun. So for references and where to get more info, go out and pick up the book, The Ultimate Hang 2 by Derek Hansen. This book will tell you everything you need to know about hammock camping. It is the Bible of hammock camping. It is absolutely fantastic. The Hammock Hang Calculator is also by Derek Hansen. I mentioned that earlier. It is a fantastic app, which will give you the perfect hang just with a few simple taps. It's a fantastic app. Go download it. It's free. Hammockforums.net is a great resource. You have to sign up, but the account is free. Lots and lots of uh, great information in the different forums, lots of different topics. There are a lot of hanging groups on Facebook, lots of hammock groups. There's um, large groups. There's you know state and local groups. Just go out and search Facebook group your Facebook groups for hammocks camping and you'll find tons. Uh, the Hang Your Own Hang HYOH podcast, I don't believe that podcast is in production anymore, but you should be able to go out and find the old episodes still. I was actually on one of those episodes of the HYOH podcast back in the day and um, I, they should still be out there uh, in, in the podcasts under iTunes, so if you go look uh, just look under the hang your, look for the hang your own hang podcast and uh, they were full of great information uh, I'm sad that they stopped producing those uh, I, I believe they did uh, of course there's my YouTube channel Outland Outdoors You've, you're already on it so you found it go look through some of my past videos on tarp hanging hammock hanging I talk about this stuff a lot and then, of course, the de facto guy who knows everything and anything about hammocks is Suge Emery, Sean Suge Emery. He is, he must have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on hammocks out there. Every single aspect, every topic of hammock hanging. He's fun, entertaining. He's a lot more entertaining than me. Uh, he's a fantastic resource. I would say he is the man when it comes to hammock camping. And there's others. There's Syntax 77, Outdoor Adventures many many other channels out there lots and lots of channels that you can check out just search around YouTube you'll find all kinds of information and with that that is the end of my presentation everybody I hope I didn't uh, overwhelm you too much with information I know I went through a lot of things kinda quickly like I said there are lots and lots of references of places to go go out and check out Shug's channel Shug Emery uh, he has a, a playlist topic for everything just absolutely great resource I hope this helped you out if you're looking at uh, getting into hammock camping and uh, curious about my take on the the uh, activity. It's it's a it's a fun thing. I love it. I really enjoy it a lot. Uh, I enjoy going out in the backcountry with my hammock and just sleeping in the woods. It's a fantastic time. 
All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys real soon.